So we are going to look at object, object detection with neural networks and we are going to see if us humans detect objects in the same way as neural networks and to do this we're going to trick the neural networks and see if we're tricked in the same way. Let's do some object detection. We're going to take a picture of something. So we've got some sunglasses here and then I will email that to myself. So we've got the emailed uh, image here which we've called image, nothing too technical, so we can see the sunglasses there. We're going to go into MATLAB and we are going to, first of all, we're going to load our network and then what we're going to do is we're going to get our image. This is a pre-trained network done by someone else for um, object detection. We have to resize it to 224 by 224. This is the size of image that ResNet accepts, so it has to be that size. So we've got our image and then we can classify it and it will give us two things back, but the one we're most interested in is this variable called cat, the category. Write that out. We've got some sunglasses in our image. So, what's going on there? There is a repository of images online called ImageNet. And what this is, is it's just an array of images that are annotated with an object that's in them. And you can um, submit your neural network or your artificial intelligence to see how well you can classify these images. So at the moment, the record is about 91%. Um, and there's a thousand categories. So this is a really difficult task. So 91% is pretty good. And looking at all of the categories as well, they're not things like um, cat and dog. They're a certain breed of cat and a certain breed of dog. So actually very difficult. And I imagine most people will probably get between 95 and 98%, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. So ResNet that we're using um, gets about 70, 71%, which might seem quite low, but when you've got a thousand categories, it's actually really good. And the reason we're using it as well is because it's a bit smaller than some of the other networks and because we're going to be running it a lot of times. Okay, so there is a lot of data inside ResNet. It's a 44 megabyte download, I think, and probably about two thirds of that are just raw numbers. So there's millions and millions of parameters in ResNet. There's been some videos on convolutional neural networks before, and this is um, what we've got here. And with this amount of variables, it's very hard to understand what's going on on the inside of the network. So there are some videos with Mike where he's talked about analyzing the layers of the convolutional network to find features and so on and so forth. And this is really good. However, in the networks that are becoming very good at this type of thing, there's a lot of layers and there's a lot of numbers in there. And as human beings, we just can't make sense of that much data. It doesn't mean anything to us. So how do we try and figure out a little bit of what's going on in here? If you give ResNet an image, we will essentially get a vector of numbers. So we've got a thousand categories any image could possibly be. And it will give you a value, and all these values will add up to one, hopefully, um, specifying how likely it thinks a specific object is in that image. So for instance, that picture of the sunglasses might have been 0.1% cat or something like that. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and we can actually see it on the screens. We've got category and we've got res and res actually is this information. So it's basically a vector of size 1000, which specifies these odds. So if we just plot this, when it comes up, we should see that it was a likelihood of 0.68, something like that. Now, the other probability is so low, you can see a little bit of a spike. So it was, it thinks that something here. So that big pointy spike in the middle, that's sunglasses. That's sunglasses. And if we look at 766, so MATLAB counts from one, but this list is zero. So we're looking for 765. A rocking chair, close enough. Should we check another one? It thinks there's a little bit of rocking chair. Is that the spike? 422, so 421. Bannister, I suppose with the wood, a little bit of a chance, but it's pretty sure that is just a pair of sunglasses. So you're right, sometimes it's really not sure and you get a lot more peaks and it just happens to be the highest one and that's what it classifies um, as the object in the image. Okay, so ResNet gives you a thousand numbers. So if we just do a small one, we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So this could be cat, dog, giraffe. So we'll think that 0 0.6 being the highest value um, for this class, if it was only outputting three classes, you would say it's this one, which corresponds to a giraffe. These numbers are actually very precise. So they have um, quite a few numbers after the decimal point. So what we can do is we can have an image, which we're gonna to give to ResNet, and we can focus on one of these classes. So this number here, 0 0.3, could be 0 0.317928. Okay, so very precise. So small changes in the image will affect this. If a giraffe is in our picture and it's 0 0.6, what we can do is we can just change one pixel in the image. 
just one, and we can see how this number changes. Okay, so if it goes ever so slightly up, what we could do is we could keep that change. And if it goes ever so slightly down or, or doesn't change at all, we can reject that change. And if we do this over time, we'll be able to make small changes which will change this number and hopefully increase it until that is the category that is seen in the image and not the giraffe. So this, this number will go down and this one will go up, but, but only changing one pixel at a time. And we can keep on doing this and incrementally move more towards a different classification. So we're going to do this with a picture of the remote control. This is something that we all know what this is. Uh, this is my remote control um, from home that I took a photo of. What we're going to do is we're going to use this image and we are going to try and trick ResNet into misclassifying it. And let's say we're going to turn this remote control into something else. So the classes I chose are coffee mug, computer keyboard, envelope, golf ball and photocopier. So we're trying to change the original image here of the remote control into another image according to ResNet by just making these small incremental changes. So we've got our remote control and then we can look and see what um, the changes that were made to turn this into a coffee mug. And here we go. So that's it. For all the changes that it's made to the image, it now thinks that that is over 99% like it being a coffee mug. Can you see the coffee mug there? If it is, it's, uh, it's definitely by one of the more abstract artists. Exactly, right? And then we can go computer keyboard. I mean, there's some space here surrounded by some boundaries. I mean, it, it's loose. Some of the things happen, this is an envelope, doesn't like an envelope. This is a photocopier. And we have a golf ball here, which is slightly different. It just seems to me that there might be some attempt to get the dimples on a golf ball. I mean, again, it's very, very loose. We can categorically say that if we gave that to a person, they would say there's a remote control in that image and some noise. And I can imagine that, you know, that's, you've cropped that remote control to be on a white background. Yep. But if that was, say, a carpet or something like that, you wouldn't even notice the difference. Exactly, yep. Um, especially if it was higher resolution as well, um, and you're less able to see those dots. Um, yeah, that's very much the case. Um, so something made me think after doing this, maybe, maybe there's something about remote control which is just inherently confusing. Maybe I picked a class which is difficult for it to recover from and move to a different class, not that it's ever trained to do that. So I thought I'll give it a blank slate and start with a completely blank image and then see what representations would it make if it doesn't have to change anything. It can just go from blank image to whatever it wants. So the same thing, just making one incremental change at a time and adding it up until it's 99% sure it's a certain class. This is our coffee mug. That looks like the world at night from the ISS with just a few lights over Africa. Not a bad shout. Computer keyboard. If we're being truly optimistic, that could be a key, but it's not the best rendition of a keyboard. This is an envelope. I say there's not much there, but it's, I mean, these are all 99% sure. So it is really sure that these are a certain things. So here's an interesting one, actually, the golf ball. Now it's definitely not a golf ball, but it seems that there is an attempt there to make something that looks like the dimples in a golf ball. If you're trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, and that's probably the feature that it's most looking for. That's what it thinks a golf ball is. So not necessarily round per se, but these dimples. And the last one is the photocopier. So something's going on in ResNet in a way which we just can't rationalize. I'm pretty sure that if you edited a picture and put some pixels in certain places, we wouldn't be fooled by it. So something like ResNet could make a pretty decent attempt at a driverless car. So it could probably stay within in between the lines do some accelerating and braking. For motorway driving, I think it would be pretty good. But when you have things like this and things you can't really interpret very well, like a little ray of sunshine reflecting off a water drop on a leaf, like 20 yards over there and some other things, you could get some strange behavior. However, on aggregate, you wouldn't, I think. So it, to actually make an effort to try and sort of spoof these networks and make them misclassify something, um, is, is like a dedicated task. For it to happen naturally, I think is exceptionally rare. However, um, you just don't want it to happen at all. And it would be great if you could understand this. And it would be, it'd be great for sort of just our understanding and our happiness with this if it did draw a golf ball or something like that. So when there's lots of blank space, the envelope was quite sparse. Yeah, there's not much going on in envelope. So it looked like it made a lot more changes for a golf ball than an envelope. But I was thinking, how good can we get this? I mean, the minimum number of yeah, changes. Yeah. Minimum number of changes. So, because you mentioned it was on a white background, so the change is a bit more obvious, but can we get it close enough so that 
it's really there's really not much going on there. So obviously I, I've shot myself in the foot there with it being a white background because you can notice all the changes. But what I did is I went back to my trusty friend, the genetic algorithm, which we spoke about on a previous video. So if you're in the desert and you had one rucksack, you'd have to fill it with the most valuable items. And the fitness function of the genetic algorithm is just to try and maximize the value um, of a certain a certain category, so the number attached to a certain category, so that it changes it from being a remote control. So it doesn't have to be 99%, but if the highest number, if it's like, for example, 70% sure that it's a remote control, but we're gonna try and change um, the likelihood of it being a golf ball, we're gonna try and increase that until the golf ball is higher than the original image of the remote control. And we're gonna see what that looks like. And we're only gonna give it 100 pixels to play with. So we've got 224 by 224, which is about 50,000, yep. something like that, um, pixels, and we're gonna change 100 of them. So can we change the, um, the categorization ResNet gives the remote control by just changing 100 pixels? You can, which is good. So we'll just go through the same five again, um, but we've got our coffee mug here, and there we go. That's with 100 pixels being changed. A lot less information there. And that does just look like noise. We can't do anything with that information. And similarly with computer keyboard, 100 pixels, not too much of a change there compared to the others. And this is our envelope, very similar. Golf ball now doesn't really even have the concept of a dimple in the golf ball. So it just looks like random noise. And same with the photocopier. And I think if we push this hard enough, we could probably get it down to about 50, 70 pixels or something like that. These networks are exceptionally good at um, categorizing um, which objects are, are in images. However, they seem to be doing it in a very different way to us human beings. It doesn't quite tie in with our intuition. When we did this originally, um, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if the genetic algorithm or iteratively hill climbing through the image would make something that looked like a coffee mug. That would make sense. We didn't know that, but it turns out it just makes um, garbage and puts it on the image and uh, yeah, changes its classification. In particular, what we are doing is uh, to uh, 3D print these uh, kind of uh, uh, systems such that in future they can actually be manufactured together with the robot body and have right. integrated solutions. And that's going to be slow, except it's not slow because there's hardly any ones uh, in here. 